Hi there, welcome to Longfleet at Home. Although, as you can see, this week I am very definitely not at home. I've come about five miles up the road to Sandbanks here in Poole because I thought it'd be just nice for us to get out, wouldn't it? I know some of you have been um, shielding and haven't been able to leave the house at all. So today I thought we could come down to the beach together, even although it's virtually, it's better than nothing, isn't it? But also there's another reason why I wanted to um, record my message sitting on the beach today. And that is because um, so often many of the stories that we see in the Bible of um, things that Jesus taught about or stories of God acting in the Old Testament didn't necessarily happen in a church building, but in the real world, the world in which we live. And time and time again, Jesus used real life examples to tell stories with um, hidden meanings, you know, like parables um, or things that were around him, around the people who were listening to him, just to use as examples so that people could relate to them. I mean, take this sand, for instance, that I'm sitting on, it's lovely. Um, you know, Jesus talked about uh, the the chap who built his house upon the sand, the foolish man who built his house upon the sand uh, and wondered why it fell to bits when the rain came and hit it. Well, of course, he's talking about people building foundations on something that isn't solid. Whereas if you build your house, if you build your life on a solid foundation that is God, then when the storms hit, it may be difficult, but your life is going to stand up much more uh, to the wind and uh, to the rain of life. So he used sand and time and time again he used um, the illustration of sea, the sea, and um, of rocks, um, all sorts of things that people could look at and relate to and say, oh yeah, okay, I get it. So another reason I wanted to come down here today was because um, last week I was recording a thought for the day for um, BBC Radio and Gail and I came down here and I saw the picture that I'm just about to show you of this little buggy's gone past. Uh, you can hear him, you can't see him. Um, yeah, if I flip the camera around, hopefully this will work. Um, No, I have to actually physically turn the camera around. Right, hang on a minute, I'll turn it around. Here we go, slowly. I'm not very good at panning. It's a little bit jerky, as you can see, but okay. So, because I can't monitor it, I'm just gonna have to guess when you can see it. Okay, so can you now see those rocks over there? Um, they're obviously covering up some sort of pipe, aren't they? But at the end of it, you can see um, a railing, and I hope there's a life boy in there. <laughs> but I saw that the other day and it just really hit me. You know, there's the sea all around, the wind is blowing. It's quite, um, quite breezy today, as you might be able to see. Um, but we don't know what the sea's gonna do from one minute to the next, do we? You know, it might suddenly sort of whip up and get quite rough again. But there, if you were standing there, um, you could be holding onto the railing. There's a life boy as well and you're standing on the rock. And that, I'll just come back round. Oh, actually, let me take, take you the other way, then you can see Bournemouth as well. Right, slowly going round. <laughs> I'm winding up, slowly winding up the wire from the microphone. Oh, dearie me. Oh, you can see why I never got a job as a cameraman. Well, I never tried, obviously. But yeah, this reminded me of these verses that also came up this week and um, really blessed me and I hope they'll bless you too. So this is Isaiah 43 and it says this. But now, O Jacob, listen to the Lord who created you. O Israel, the one who formed you says, do not be afraid for I have ransomed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. When you go through deep waters, I will be with you. When you go through rivers of difficulty, you will not drown. When you walk through the fire of oppression, you will not be burnt up. The flames will not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, 
the Holy One of Israel, your Saviour. I love those verses. I've been reading um, a Nazareth Manifesto by Sam Wells. I told some of you that already. Um, but if you're looking for a good book to read, it's really, really good. And it talks a lot about God being with us. And you know that that's one of my, my favourite themes since I, I first um, heard the emphasis put on that. God is with us. And in this book, it's talking about the fact that God doesn't always take us out of a situation. He doesn't take necessarily take us out of the suffering, but he is there with us, going through it with us. And in the book, it talks about the story of um, Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego, Daniel's friends. Uh, obviously, their story is found in the book of Daniel in the Old Testament. And you remember how, because they insisted on worshipping God uh, and not the king, even though they had been exiled into the land of Babylon and they were sticking to their guns and they were still worshipping God, even though they'd been told not to. And as punishment, they were thrown into the fiery furnace. And on looking inside, the guards um, or the king found that there were not three people walking around, walking around in the fiery furnace when they should have just been burnt up, but there were four people. God was with them in that fiery furnace. And the book, A Nazareth Manifesto, talks about the fact that they didn't get to avoid the furnace, but that their salvation came in the midst of it and God was there with them. And it just made me think how often we go through things in life, through difficult things, and we think, where is God? He is there, right there with us. There's a guy over there hydrofoiling. I'm going to spin around just to see if you can see him. Or it might be a lady, I don't know. Just over there, zooming along, zipping along over the waves uh, as the wind carries them. That's another thing that um, you can imagine Jesus using as an example. See, you can't see the wind. You can't see where it's coming from or where it's going. But because that person has harnessed the power of the wind in their sail, they are sailing along on top of the waves. Sometimes that will be our experience. Sometimes when we're working in harmony with the Holy Spirit, We'll just sail over the top of the, the difficulties, perhaps, and we'll feel that we're really coping well. And other times, even though we're doing everything that God says that we should be doing, even though we've done everything that he wants us to do, even then, we will suffer. And sometimes we'll think, I don't understand why that is. But God is with us, even in the midst of that suffering. And we can trust him to stay with us, to deliver us in some way. If you think um, of a time when you were ill or when you were really struggling with something and somebody came and sat with you and was just with you. Perhaps it was, perhaps it was back when you were a kid and maybe your mum or your dad or a sibling or a carer came and was with you, perhaps gave you a cuddle. They couldn't take that sickness away but you felt better for the knowledge that they were with you. Perhaps you're feeling a bit like that today. Perhaps you are feeling as if the rivers of difficulty are threatening to just go over your head and you're feeling as if perhaps you're gonna be submerged by the whole thing. Perhaps you feel as if some of the waves that we've seen, I'll show you again in a minute, um, are just about to crash down over your head. Well, the good news is that God has promised that though you go through the rivers of difficulty, they will not drown you. They will not overwhelm you. Why? Because he is with you. Whatever you are going through today, whatever anxiety you might be facing, and we know that, as we've said countless times before, I think it is important to repeat it. We are in uncertain times, aren't we? We don't know what's ahead of us. We're just thinking as church ministers, we are used to trying at least 
not very good at it, but we at least try to plan months in advance. Uh, and we can't really do that at the moment because we just don't know what is around the corner. But what we do know is that whatever is around the next corner, God will be there with us. He won't abandon us. He will be there with us. So I'm going to leave you now just with some views of the sea and just pray that as you look out over this beautiful view, that God will calm your heart that you will have peace of mind just knowing that he is with you. Let's pray. Lord, we just want to thank you that you have made this beautiful creation, that we can just sit here and look out over the waves and just imagine you with us, Lord, because you are with us. We can't see you, we can't always feel you, but you have promised that you are with us. Lord, for all of us who are suffering just now, for all of those who we love, who are suffering or who are bereaved, who are sad, who are going through tough times and uncertain times. Lord, we pray this over them and for them. Your promise, your words, Lord. Do not be afraid, for I have ransomed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you go through deep waters, I will be with you. When you go through rivers of difficulty, you will not drown. When you walk through the fire of oppression, you will not be burnt up. The flames will not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Saviour. So that's the promise for you today. Hope you have a really blessed week and you join us again next week. God bless.